Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Restroom Off The Cuff. Today we have a fun little extra segment for you guys um, known as Wristwatch Rambles and Rants. Um, and in this case, uh, this kind of uh, non-review format will actually be discussing a comparison between what I feel are two leading options within that kind of everyday timepiece, independently owned, uh, you know, in, in the spirit uh, of all that, and just kind of fully loaded, everything you need, nothing you don't. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot to love here. These are two probably some of my most worn watches, um, and I own a lot just because yeah, I have a YouTube channel where I review watches, so I probably buy more watches than I should, and I also just get to experience a lot more watches than uh, your average bear, um, and I don't have to worry about flipping them or anything because I don't sell any of my watches. I just There's just a bunch of them that I keep around specifically for stuff like this where I get to compare and just talk about long-term ownership. You know, I don't just kind of... Uh, spend a week with it, flip it, and then just, you know, give you those thoughts. I try to have a little bit more and to differentiate myself from some of the other channels that are out there. But this particular segment um, would be brought to you by Wrist Candy Watch Club. So I try to be as transparent as possible about paid advertisements. So um, I don't do paid reviews. Um, I do paid segments. So this is a sponsored segment, Wrist Candy Watch Club. Check them out. Their information, they're supporting the channel. Um, so go ahead and support them if you choose to. Um, I'll also, when we zoom the camera out, I'll, I'll actually uh, show a couple of their cool new straps that they recently released. They've updated and upgraded, um, so I'm excited to share those with you guys. But the the meaning of this particular segment is really to kind of, again, just, I get questions about these two watches a lot. Uh, and there's two good reasons for that. Uh, the first reason, they're outstanding watches. So a lot of people wanna know more about them. The, the second reason being, since they are not really watches you can go see in a store, they kind of have to ask about them. Um, and as popular as they are, they're not so popular that you'll catch anybody down the street. Maybe at a local get together or, you know, gathering for watch folks, uh, you might see either of these models there. But you, it'll be very rare that you would actually catch either one of these at a boutique of some kind or at, um, you know, over on somebody's wrist. So um, here we have, of course, your uh, Formex Essence 39 and the Monta Noble. Um, and I think these are just, gosh, I love these watches. So uh, with that said, we'll zoom the camera out get these pieces in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, now before we dive into these watches, um, you know, to kind of just continue to shout out the segment sponsor, Wrist Candy Watch Club. Here's actually probably what you guys, when you think Wrist Candy Watch Club, this is what they're most known for, are these really cool, um, affordable NATOs in these great color schemes. I think they do have some really great designs. Um, so yeah, these are kind of a pick of the litter in terms of some of their newer ones that are a quite handsome and, and very premium. But, um, you know, there's there's a range now when it comes to, uh, to NATO straps uh, or G10 straps or whatever you're legally allowed to call them these days. And uh, so, you know, it's nice to have stuff that's good quality and, you know, from a brand that actually specializes in making straps. But what they did recently is roll out some cool, new, more luxurious and, you know, more premium style there. These are pretty darn sweet, guys. Take a look. Uh, and honestly, when I saw these, I was like, whoa, would not expect those from Wrist Candy Watch Club. So I thought that was really nice because they're really known for just the fun kind of summery stuff, uh, you know, very cheap, great deals and discounts um, from that standpoint. And then you see something like this that steps um, into that, you know, more seatbelt style, thicker, um, you look at that hardware, uh, all milled and whatnot. So very, very nice, very handsome color combinations here. I do like that you can either get it with the kind of, um, 
you know uh the engraved stripe if you will where it's it's really just uh within the weave pattern or you can actually get uh you know a, a bit of color play in there uh, which I think is great as well. So very, very cool. And yeah, just nice to see uh, people stepping things up. So yeah, with that, guys, check them out. They're supporting this segment because normally I'm doing reviews all the time. I'm not always able to indulge in some of these fun comparisons that people kind of request. And this is a requested one, guys. A lot of people will hit me up on Instagram and or Facebook messaging and just ask, Hey, what would you do if you had, you know, two hundred or two thousand um, dollars or twenty five hundred bucks? Uh, you know, kind of a one watch. Hey, I have this diver. I have this piece, that piece, yada yada yada. But I really want an official, just legit, beautiful watch. These two watches here, guys, are both legit and beautiful. Uh, my gosh, so. And the thing that I love about these is that they're actually very, very different. Um, you know, of course, and it's and you can even see in the way that the not just the styling, the design, the um, you know the general proportions. Although the scales are actually pretty similar because you have basically a 38 and a half and a 39 here, but because of the way that they you know use their dial space and dial layout they are really, really quite different in, in appearance, uh, which I think is, is pretty mind-blowing. And hopefully, we'll convince some of the people in the comments, which always come around, to start believing that uh, there's more to the way a watch wears on the wrist than just the ultimate uh, dimensions. Uh, because, yeah, this is a 39, and it it wears smaller than this 38 and a half. So um, and a lot of it has to do with the dial size. So these are both really great watches that I've ranted and raved about. Um, but this uh, ramble and rant is going to be more so about comparing these two uh, because, yeah, a lot of people ask about it. So, you know, this is almost like a very specific and rambly Q&A um, for anybody that's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to be my first time spending over a thousand bucks uh for a watch you know what's the best thing that i can get uh without spending too much um and i think these are two outstanding options the monta is going to be slightly more expensive at 1760 um and then the formex is going to be slightly more affordable um at 1390. Uh, another thing to note in terms of kind of the objective here um the uh formex is a chronometer while the uh monta is just basically uh you know tuned within chronometer specs so not quite the same guarantee level from that standpoint also, you're going to get an SW300 inside of the Monta versus an SW200 in the Formex. So um, you're going to be basically getting a uh, you know a higher spec movement in the in the Monta, but then at a higher grade in terms of uh, the finishing and the actual um, you know. Uh, physical grade of it this is going to be you know something that was actually tuned up to chronometer so um that is really great um but yeah these are both great pieces uh also you're going to get a bit of a difference i mean these are very different pieces right they just kind of fit within the same space in terms of like man i could literally wear these watches every day probably for the rest of my life and they would pretty much match i mean there's a couple of times uh you know within the week here and there where i might be just wearing straight up just black and gray and and maybe these would feel out of place but for the most part um i'm gonna be wearing some blue jeans uh i'm gonna be wearing something that has some white uh, or lighter accents on it and um you know these pieces are just gonna be amazing uh some things to look at guys uh, the thinness, the shortness from the lug to lug. Um, so I know the dimensions did fly across earlier, uh, but in terms of the thickness, you're getting the 9.7 millimeter thickness here versus the 10 millimeter, so slightly thicker. Um, but honestly, when you look at it, just because of the way that everything's cut and shaped, you can see here, much softer in general. Uh, I wouldn't say soft in terms of like, 
uh, the breaks uh, in the transition, like that is all very sharp and, and, and luscious and gorgeous um, and full of luster, but um, it's just an overall the K shape, it's more organic, It's the lines are very classic, um, and that's the best way I can describe this piece. It's, it's absolutely just an instant classic. It's, it's gorgeous, right? Um, and then you look at the Formex, where it, it takes... Uh, a lot more of technical details. Uh, they really get into some fun stuff. And then, of course, you're going to also get this great uh, case suspension there, which they're really known for. Um, also, uh, no screw down crown here with 100 meters of water resistance versus a screw down crown with 150 meters of water resistance. So, again, you know, there's there's so many things where these go back and forth where there's not really just a subject, I'm, so, I'm sorry, an objective clear leader between the two because there are trade-offs although this one's more expensive it does offer some special features like uh this great clasp and then you also do get half links um so you can really dial in this fit and it has of course a you know what people really love about it is you're gonna get this toolless micro adjust here so you can go ahead and click it out one two three four uh, yeah three boom and then you also do have the uh, you can see I'm using two specifically here um, but yeah this is great very nice beautiful fit and finish you can see the luster just look at that transition and this is just the clasp this is the part that gets banged up on stuff and it looks gorgeous then you look at these bevels all around the edges of this beautifully brushed look at the brushing on there how uniform it is how it, the light rolls and glides off of it i mean this thing's gorgeous and you look at the opaline white dial which is actually a silver uh color that will just render visually white most of the time because of just the way that it not only catches and reflects the light but the way that the texture holds the light um, really quite wonderful and but one thing they have in common that's really cool is that they both have the date at the six o'clock so no one can complain I'm sure there's people that would prefer no dates but then uh, when you come around here you know along with kind of the technical side although they don't have a class but they have the butterfly you are going to get um, some cool little features like uh, this little number here where you can extend the clasp you see so there's that way and then basically this will fold back underneath and now be flush so now you get that little bit of extra to let your wrist breathe you also are going to get um, some nice uh, you can see here a little ceramic detent ball uh, so this is going to be really smooth on open and close and neither of them have parts bin clasps or and mechanisms i mean all this stuff is just for these watches which is beautiful um and you can't necessarily say that about the competition um you're also going to see here um really just well done just beautiful and then of course if you want to get really close on this mechanism goodness you can also see ceramic detent ball right there so these guys are you know they're both swiss made watches they're both independently run um you know one is based out of the u.s uh the other is old school swiss like uh i shouldn't say old school but i mean you know they've been around for quite some time 1999 that's pretty good uh versus founded in 2015 although i will say formex has had um you know although they're older they've probably spent uh these two brands have spent probably equal amount of time really being in the limelight because formex kind of emerged recently and a lot of it was because of the original essence model which was a 43 uh where monta really stood out and and kind of right out of the gates was kind of dabbling within this field uh versus formex which was a bit more sporty a bit more niche in terms of its motorsports designs and the suspension cases this is really that first big crossover piece 
where it's appealing to a lot of people, um, even outside of kind of the niche automotive motorsports style watch market. So very, very cool. Man, I love these guys. Let me uh, go ahead and just let's put them on wrist and show you guys how they wear comparatively. All right, check that out. Oh, here we go. A little left and right action. Um, yeah. I mean, if you guys are sitting here waiting for me to tell you which one of these watches are better, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I really can't say. Honestly, they're, they're both amazing. Um, if you can appreciate either of their design aesthetics, you will absolutely not be disappointed in terms of the fit, finish, and build quality as a whole. Um, also, in terms of the customer experience, um, I have nothing but positive uh, you know, feedback from that standpoint, and you guys don't have to take my word for that. Definitely feel free to check the Facebook groups or um, you know, uh, any type of media within their website and and just you know to get a pulse of how great these two brands are run um and these are just two of my favorite models from these brands and they're just they're outstanding look at that i mean i have a seven and a quarter inch wrist you can see uh you know this thing wears really really nicely and some might even say a little large than larger than you would think for a 38 and a half because something like as in 556 is a 38 and a half and it wears much much smaller than this um but you take a look here um some people might think oh man that looks right at home on your wrist some people might think that looks really small um because of just the way that they shrink the dial down and make that bezel so prominent with that, just that extra layer of thickness to highlight that brush that just ties in to the light show that comes off of that bracelet. And both bracelets are gorgeous for different reasons. You can see the way the light plays as I rotate on either side. Man, these just, they're awesome. So, I mean, I would say, hey, you're trying to make any decisions, uh, which one's right for me? Um, hey, let's let's uh, take them off and check out the loom. Uh, maybe do some little eye transition. You guys can take a look at the finishing a little bit closer up. Um, and then, you know, we'll get into some closing thoughts on that. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and hit the lights here. All right, as you can see, they're even both using BGW-9. Uh, in terms of the loom application, you guys saw they're both excellently applied. Um, but in the overall potency, I'd say, you know, the lead is gonna have to go to the Monta just based on the fact that there's more surface area there. Um, but you can see they're both quite legible. You're also getting that uh, dual baton at the 12 o'clock for instant orientation. Some of you are gonna be screaming about that in the comments section if there wasn't some type of double um, thing there just so you can know where 12 is. So yeah, I'm glad that that's one less argument to have. Uh, but uh, one thing I like to do and work in here is some low light transition because you're not always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. Oftentimes, you're going to be coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, underneath the shade of a tree, or maybe just spending time in your favorite automobile. So I do... <laughs> Look at that light play. Goodness. Um, you know, I do like to get some idea of what these do look like in less than optimal lighting, some transitional lighting, uh, some mixed lighting conditions, some harsh lighting conditions here where you're gonna get the really, really high contrast, but look at the brushing on these bracelet links. Just everything is so uniform and tidy. Oh my gosh, so really, really not finding any type of defect, but look at that play on the Formex dial. Very dynamic, very transitional, beautiful, where the Monta dial, it's a lot more subtle. It just, the way that it holds the light, you can see where it goes kind of in between whites and beiges and pale silvers. Uh, it just, it has a lot of play within those tones. And then you do get the great, uh, you know, contrast of the blue 
loom just jumping out at you versus the Formex dial, which can become quite dark depending on the angle and the light source and everything like that. Um, and, ooh, man, that is just, I mean, you know, I know you guys really enjoy these low light transitions, but, but just so you know, I do too. <laughs> Look at these guys, man, they're awesome. All right, so I've rambled on about these two watches and I probably like didn't even touch enough on the specs. They both have four hertz sweeps, which is eight ticks per second. Um, both have, you know, close power reserves, 42 versus 38 um, in terms of the SW300 versus the 200. They're both tuned within chronometer specs, uh, plus or minus five seconds on the Monta versus uh, plus uh, six or minus four on the Formax. Uh, they have display case backs. They have amazingly articulated bracelets. Uh, they're just executed very, very differently uh, in terms of the aesthetic and just the overall design approach. They're just very different watches, but they just have these cool commonalities in terms of the fact that they're very premium for the money. And some people are like, whoa, 1390 for a watch that uh, I don't even recognize the name and I can't flex it. And, you know, people recognize the Stone and Longines and Hamilton. Um, but um, they, if, if they know those brands uh, and you put any of those watches next to these, uh, they'll also be blown away on how easily you can recognize that none of the offerings from those brands can even stand anywhere close to these. Um, so, it, I mean, these just are doing things um, that are just so far ahead of the competition. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of scary. Um, so... I love these watches. Honestly, they scratch that itch in terms of just kind of that perfect one watch. And yes, I have a lot of watches, but it's nice to have one watch that it's just like, oh, cool. It still has a, you know, a wind on it. I can just pick it up and go and throw it on with almost anything. Um, and it's going to be fine. If it rains, it's going to be fine. If I have to you know, dive my hand underneath the sink, it's going to be fine. If I drop something in a stream and I grab it, it's going to be fine. If I'm standing too close to the ocean um, when a wave hits and I'm trying to take a picture of the kids, I'm going to be fine because these things are just built to such excellent tolerances. It, it's, it's really hard to argue with them. Um, they just offer a whole lot um, and I am very happy with these pieces. So um, if you are just killing yourself over, man, I can only have one. My wife is going to hurt me. Um, it, it's You can't go wrong with either. Um, if I was to try to differentiate a little bit between the two, again, the Manta is more classic, more timeless, where the Formex is going to be a lot more contemporary, um, a lot of visual interest and facets, you know, all over the place. It, it's, I'd say the Formex is probably trying a little harder. Um, and that, yeah, they, they do a little bit more, uh, add more complexity in terms of the mixture of uh, finish. I mean, they both have screw-in links and like all the goodies. They're both using ceramic detent balls, uh, six o'clock date windows. They're at, you have loom, you have water resistance. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff on both ends. Um, but yeah, man, these things, they just trounce watches up to 2,500 bucks and beyond. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm digging them both. I'm happy to have them both. And if you were going to have them both, I support you two thumbs up, <laughs> but, uh, I understand that's not for everybody. So you can save some money if you are just a stickler, maybe for more objective qualities, the Formex being cheaper. Um, and although the movement itself is a step down in comparison, the level of finish and grade and spec on the movement is higher. So it's more like a fully loaded 
uh, version of something that is uh, marketedly a little, you know, it's like a 911 uh, versus a Cayman, right? Uh, you can get a base 911 or you can get like a Cayman GT4. A Cayman GT4 probably is gonna be a little bit more fun. Um, so you're gonna get a chronometer based SW200, a chronometer spec, I'm sorry, um, SW200 versus, you know, just a nicely tuned SW300. So, you know, again, there, there's, there's some play, there's some trade, off um you know i don't know maybe you guys just will end up liking the names better some people are like oh formex it sounds you know i'm such an original thinker uh formex sounds like cement or some cleaping cleaning material and it's just like okay cool yeah timex and rolex formex and and formex is the one that sounds cheap <laughs> it's like come on guys you just it's a lot of group think from that standpoint, which I think is laughable. Uh, Monta seems to get pretty universally um, accepted and loved. Um, but then there's a full, tons of people that are just like, it's, you know, who can't believe watches ever would cost more than seven or eight hundred bucks. And anything after that is just a hard line in the sand. But, um, you know, if I was going to. It used to be in this space, you just recommend it as in, you know, five, five, six, either an, an I or an A, and, and you just kind of carried on. Um, I think within the space, these two watches offer a lot more than, than that. So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. And again, quick shout out, Risk Candy Watch Club, support them. You know, they're supporting the channel by motivating me uh, with sponsorship to do some different segments that aren't just me looking at a watch and giving you my general feedback. I can also take the time and share some comparative feedback between two titans of the space. So again, uh, like the video, please do hit like. Man, this ramble has been rambling on. So uh, if you lasted this long, uh, let's do a, a little, what would be a great code word um, for for this segment? Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's comment uh, one that 1,000. Just, just freak people out who, who's jumped out early and then they're just gonna see the word 1000 <laughs> typed in there uh in the in the comments section so yeah type 1000 if you made it all the way to the end um and why 1000 because if you're gonna spend over a thousand bucks you might as well get one of these bad boys all right let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks